let them eat cake, let them be without police, are realizing, oh no, this is unpopular. And so they're trying to claim these aren't the droids you're looking for. They've never supported it. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. That's the voice of, um, obviously, Ted Cruz. And it goes back to what I said before. Stop playing politics with everything in this country. Defund the police. What do you think's going to happen if you take more good guys off the street? Yeah, more bad guys go on the street. You know, having been raised by my grandparents um, and pretty much a law enforcement family, cousins with Rampart, grandfather, high sheriff, um, I was the black sheep. I went to law school, but it, uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I talk to my son-in-law about this all the time. He's a sergeant with a canine division. And it's like, what do you expect's going to happen? In L.A., the county sheriff says local residents are in danger. Why? Because if you take the good guys off the street, defunding the police, it has consequences. Even though his agency's budget is up more than $250 million since, what, 2019, I guess, um, the L.A. County Sheriff is not alone in suggesting to voters that crime is up because we defunded police. I mean, you don't need to be a Rhodes Scholar to figure this one out. Uh, Dr. Alex Del Carmen is with me, head of the School of Criminology. Uh, Criminal Justice and Strategic Studies at uh, Tarleton State University in Fort Worth. Uh, doctor, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm just trying to figure out why <laughs> it takes so long to figure out some something that seemingly is so simple. Yeah, you know, two years ago when all of this stuff started being, you know, propagated throughout the United States, I said that it was a horrible idea, and I continued to say it's a horrible idea you know, first of all, it makes no sense at all logistically, right? So from a, from, a, from a logical perspective, you don't say on the one hand that law enforcement needs help, and then on the other hand say, well, let's take away all their money, right? So, so it just makes no sense at all. I mean, I always used to make the analogy of like having a kid in school that your teacher comes back and says, yeah, you know, your kid is not doing well in school. Well, let me, let me be a good parent and take away all the resources, all the books and all the tutors that that kid has in order to be able to make him or her a lot better students. So, so, so it makes no sense logically. And now that they know that it caught national attention and that it's bad politics, they're all taken aback. Exactly. And Dr. Del Carmen, that is what has driven me crazy. You know, I, if you and I met on the street and said, let's have a cup of coffee, you know, I, I wouldn't say, OK, what's your position on this poli- politically? What's your position on that? We'd go in, we'd have a cup of coffee. But I mean, it's obvious. But when you start dealing with something so serious, I mean, homicide rates are up, violent crime is up. So what did they do? They quietly went about the business and correct me if I'm wrong, of refunding a lot of these police departments. Um, but nobody's talking about it because they're not sure if it's uh, politically expedient or not. What's wrong with us? Well, and not only that, right? So there's another part of it, which, you know, there's an ABC study that just came out and supposedly, supposedly claims that most police departments, in fact, did not get defunded. But I would argue that just the spirit, just the conversation of taking away the funding from law enforcement in itself made an impact which has has resonated with many 21, 22 year olds that I would have otherwise considered the law enforcement profession. And what they in fact have done is they've re-engaged and they said, you know, they come into our universities and they're saying, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to be local cops because being a local police officer is a horrible thing. We're going to lose all of our money. Exactly. We're going to be on the front headlines of the newspaper. So now what we have is we have a horrible indicator that says to us, crime is going up. The pandemic may be over, or some people may claim that it's over, but in the end, the economy is in the pits. And then you add to that the the social media negativity towards law enforcement that is truly, truly making an impact in the next five to 10 years as to the kinds of people and who we're going to have in the law enforcement profession. It's really scary. And, you know, doctor, it, it, it again, uh, not to be redundant, it doesn't take a Rhodes Scholar to figure this out. Uh, President Bush saw it when he pulled troops out of the Middle East. Uh, Barack Obama saw it when he pulled troops out. When you pull troops out, when you pull the good guys off the street, then you create a vacuum. 
And generally, more often than not, that vacuum is filled with something just as bad or even worse. But now you don't have the people to take care of it. I mean, I, I would think Americans are smarter than that. Well, and I think we are, right? But part of the problem is we're so distracted by everything else that people are not paying attention to the things that matter. And one of the things that matters is the fact that if we don't have the good individuals out there carrying a badge and a gun that are going to risk their lives in order to protect yours and mine, if we don't have those individuals in the streets on a 24-7 cycle, we are going to have problems. And the United States right now finds itself you know, in a, in, a, in a situation where crime is going up to such levels that we criminologists for years have been predicting that this was going to happen. And in two more years from now, buckle up. If you think crime is out of hand right now, just wait in the next 12 to 24 months once the actual impact of these individuals right. leaving law enforcement is going to be felt. You know, um, I mentioned my son-in-law, um, the sergeants. Uh, he was asked, would you like to take the lieutenant's test? Or do you want to wait? He just retired his first canine partner. Or would you like to wait for funding for another dog? And he said, you know, I'll wait. I'll wait. And I talked to him about that. You know, in their um, police department, sergeants uh, with that kind of experience, they uh, they rotate, um, you know, over the squads. Uh, but he said, look, you know, I'd rather be out there. Uh, where I can at least determine what's going to happen from day to day rather than spending half the day with the legal department and the police department. You're right, doctor. Uh, new recruits aren't going to put up with this. If they don't feel that the community has their back, if they don't feel the department has their back, then they're just not going to do this. Well, and, and the generation of kids that are coming into law enforcement now is a generation that highly depends on the exposure to social media, right? So, right, so think right. about how quickly social media can have a negative impact on the psychic of that individual coming into law enforcement. My generation, you know, it was based on what the newspaper said or perhaps what, a, what the five o'clock news would report. This generation is based on instant, immediate uh, rati- uh, you know, uh, rectification and feedback from the social media spectrum, which is going to have a huge effect on that new generation coming into law enforcement. Final question, uh, talking with Dr. Alex Del Carmen, head of the School of Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Strategic Studies at Tarleton State University in Fort Worth. You tell me, from looking through the lens of your personal experience and uh, immersing yourself in this every day, what's it going to take to turn this whole law enforcement thing around? Um, Because... You know, I could go through the random anarchist groups and all the rest, but the perception, whether they defund the departments or not, the perception is still out there, isn't it? Absolutely. And, and that's what I, you know, that's what I think a lot of these folks are missing. It's not the actual dollars and cents that are going into law enforcement that may or may not make a difference. It's the negativity that exist around the country towards what they do. And the fact that everybody is so quick to grab a five second video that has no context and publicize it, you know, in the, in the front headlines and do that. I think what it's going to take is going to take for the people in the community to reinforce the fact that we support law enforcement, that we want good cops in the streets and that we are willing to pay them more, but not also pay them more because the the payment, believe it or not, at the end of the day, doesn't really make a difference. What makes a difference is the support that they're getting from the district attorneys, the support that they're getting from their communities. And so we need to change things around very quickly or else we are going to regret that we are at this state and we didn't do anything about it today. Time for the community to uh, do some heavy lifting. Um, You know, law enforcement's been doing their part for a long, long time. And look, I get some people don't like rules, regulations, parameters, guidelines. They don't like law enforcement. But that can't be that can't be the perception du jour. You know, we've got to realize what these men and women do for us every single day. And we got to hold up our end. No question. And I think that if we don't support them now, we're going to regret it later on. And that's my point. Look, this is a warning stage that we're in right now. Things are bad. They could be worse, and they're likely going to become that way if we don't just absolutely stop the the current trend. We raise up our arms. We embrace law enforcement. We give them the tools that they need, and we support them every day for what they do. If we don't do that right now, in two or three years from now, it is going to be chaos. 
Dr. Alex uh, Del Carmen, thank you, sir, for being with me. I appreciate it.